An airplane is a complex machine, ingeniously designed to the very last detail. Yet, some things about them still make no sense. Why do boarding and deboarding take so long? Why does a plane need multiple engines if it can fly with just one? And is the black box really black? It's time for some answers! Oxygen masks don't last long. The safety instructions always tell you how to use them in case of a sudden loss in cabin pressure. But they don't tell you the oxygen in that mask will only last 15 minutes. No need to panic, this amount is enough to provide passengers with oxygen until the plane reaches a safe altitude. When it descends below 10,000 feet, everyone on board will be able to breathe normally again. Planes can handle extreme temperatures. But it depends. When the pilot is sharing flight info with you, they nonchalantly mention extreme outside temperatures of minus 70 degrees. Yet similar figures can keep a plane from taking off in the first place. The temperatures at cruising altitude and on the ground are entirely different things. On the ground, bitter cold in the minus 60 degree range makes starting the engine much harder. Add to that de-icing the plane and runway, as well as keeping maintenance crews safe out there in sub-zero temperatures, and you can see the problem. Planes don't need two engines to fly. If one engine fails, the aircraft can continue flying safely for over 5 hours. Granted, it'll be less fuel efficient and gradually drift down from normal cruising altitude. But all modern planes on long-distance routes are tested to cope with that situation, and pilots are trained for it. In fact, planes can even glide for a while with no functioning engines at all. Ok, they might not drop from the sky immediately, but I still like having all those backups just in case. Pilots fall asleep, and it's ok! Thanks to the wonder that is autopilot, a plane can perfectly fly itself across the globe. Meanwhile, the human pilots can doze off, but there are regulations on that. Only one pilot at a time can take a snooze, and there are still things an autopilot isn't capable of – taxiing, landing, setting the start and end locations, and making witty jokes while briefing passengers about the flight. The way deboarding is organized makes no sense. Deboarding usually adds up to an extra half an hour to flight time. But computer simulations show that it can be done 35% faster. All you'd have to do is deboard by aisle, not by row. Let's imagine a cabin layout with one aisle in the middle and rows of three on each side. First, left aisle passengers leave the plane, then the right aisle. Next are middle seat passengers on the left side, followed by those on the right. Finally, the left window seats, and then the right. It might be a problem for passengers traveling together, but it's a great way to avoid aisle blocking. One reason airlines aren't using this method just yet – they're more interested in making some extra money selling first-class and priority seats. So there. Chaotic boarding would work better than groups. The way it is now by group, the plane gets loaded from the back to the front, after first, business, and priority classes, of course. Well, la-di-da. The whole process would be much faster if people were allowed to choose their own seats on the plane. They'd feel the rush to grab a spot instead of standing around putting their carry-on in the bin. An even better way to cut down boarding time would be to let passengers board by aisle. First all window seats, then middle, then aisle. Again, it would cut down the time we have to wait for others to get their stuff put away. But for some reason, airlines aren't doing it. You can open the plane bathroom from the outside. All you have to do is flip the switch underneath the lavatory sign. No worries though, it's not widely used by curious passengers, but by the crew when they think the person inside might need help. Airplanes can trigger lightning. They try to avoid flying in lightning storms, but they are designed to withstand it just in case. Plenty of aircraft get struck more than once a year and are perfectly fine afterwards. More than that, planes can cause lightning themselves when they fly through a cloud that's heavily charged. The bolt starts from the fuselage and travels out. 
black boxes aren't even black. The flight data recorder, more commonly known as the black box, is actually bright orange. It's covered in eye-catching heat-resistant paint to make it easier to find if necessary. They're still called black in honor of the first boxes, whose color matched their nickname. The dirtiest place on the plane isn't the bathroom. That, my friend, would be the tray table you eat off of. In fact, there are about 10 times as many bacteria on it as there are on the toilet. The seatbelt buckle and overhead air vent have roughly the same amount of germs as that toilet flush button. This is disturbing. The blankets and pillows aren't always cleaned after each passenger either. And one more thing to keep you from ever wanting to fly again. <laughs> the provided earphones have most likely been in someone else's ears before you. Plain air is as dry as the Sahara Desert. To keep the air clean, planes have the same air filtering technology as hospitals. The price you pay for that cleanliness? Pressurized onboard air is super dry only about 20% humidity, the same as in the Sahara. Your hands get dry, your throat and nose feel like sandpaper, and your whole body loses a lot of water, especially on long-haul flights. They could add an air humidifier to help the situation, but they'd also need to load the water tank for it, and that equals extra weight and more money spent. So for now, drink lots of water to stay hydrated. Plain food isn't that bad, but flight conditions make it tasteless. Airlines don't hire bad cooks to make your meals taste like cardboard. The difference in air pressure and that same super low humidity numb about one-third of your taste buds, just like when you catch a cold. So it's not the food, it's you. Pilots and co-pilots don't usually eat the same food. Not because they have completely different diets, but for your safety. Yeah! If something is wrong with one of the meals, at least one of the pilots won't get food poisoning and will be able to take care of the flight. If they must eat the same meal for some reason, they'll at least do it at different times so they don't feel sick together. That's comforting. Global warming makes turbulence worse. The more carbon dioxide gets in the air, the more likely turbulence is to occur during the flight. That's because temperatures rise in the lower atmosphere and drop in the stratosphere, causing the tug-of-war effect in the air. Researchers believe things will only get worse with time. It could also accelerate the jet stream and make westbound flights longer than eastbound ones. Dimming the cabin lights isn't done to help you fall asleep. Sure, it helps, but safety comes before comfort on the airline's priority list. In case you'll have to leave the plane in an emergency, the dim cabin lights will make it easier for your eyes to adjust to the darkness when it's nighttime. And flight attendants don't ask you to raise the window shade to enjoy the views. They just need to see which side of the plane is better fit for an emergency evacuation. The plane environment makes you more emotional. <laughs> yes, it does. <clears throat> A survey by Gatwick Airport found that altitudes make passengers more emotional. Even if you aren't afraid of flying, getting to the airport and through all the security and long lines can be physically tiring. Then comes changes in air pressure, dry air, and often turbulence. There's also the emotional component of saying goodbye to your loved ones and the plane environment with unknown sounds. All that put together exaggerates your emotions. The same survey mentioned that people are more likely to cry at movies in the air even if they never do it on the ground. So if you see me crying as I'm watching Shrek, it's the cabin pressure, okay? Ugh. Hey, if you learned something new today, then give the video a like and share it with a friend. And here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy. Just click to the left or right. And remember, stay on the bright side of life.